Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott, and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Plug Power stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Plug Power develops hydrogen fuel systems that replace conventional batteries. Its batteries can charge items in a few minutes, as opposed to several hours, like lead acid batteries do. It allows hydrogen-powered forklifts to run at constant steady power, as opposed to regular batteries, which usually fail at the end of the shift. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 11.8 billion market cap. They're trading at 28.47 a share, and they have 416 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And it looks like they have negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have negative net income every year. Their sales look pretty good. They grow each year from 133 million to 308 million. This is the company's income statement. The top line is their revenue. Below that is cost of revenue. So they have a little gross profit each year, but then they have operating expenses. And after that, they have negative operating income every single year. They also have a good amount of debt. So they have an interest on their debt and they have a small amount in other income and expense. So each year they have negative net income. This is the statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. And then they have capital expenditures each year. And when you take operating cash flow minus capex, that's how you get free cash flow. So the company has negative operating cash flow each year. So that means, of course, they have negative free cash flow as well. Since they're operating at a loss, they have to fund their business somewhere. So they use capital stock and debt. They issued 23 million of capital stock in 2017, then 38 million, then 172 million, then half a billion. They also issue a lot of debt, 47 million, 172 million, 241 million, and 400 million. Let's look at a capital structure, 135 million of equity, 537 million dollars of debt. So they have a lot of debt in that capital structure. They have 400 million of net debt, and their WAC is 11.16%. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $12.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $9.3 billion. We divide that by 416 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $22.46. They're trading at $28.47, so they're trading at a 27% premium. It's a sell according to the model. The stock was really flat for a while, but the stock price has really been driven up with the whole EV craze. So if you bought it down here, you made a really nice return on investment. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $749,000 today. So their beta is a little high, 1.79, so that means the stock moves about 1.8 times the market. Their stock has gone up more than 700% in the past 52 weeks, which is obviously a lot higher than the S&P. Their 52-week low was $253, and their high was about $30. It's not common you see a stock trading above its 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. So the stock is on a real big uptrend. Also, the 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average, so it's above the golden cross. This is a really liquid stock. Over 30 million shares are traded every day. And of the 415 million shares outstanding, almost 400 million are on float. And more than half of their shares are held by institutions. They are shorted quite a bit. 16% of the shares on float are shorted. The stock shot up the other day when the company announced they were expanding their partnership with Walmart. The company has been providing Walmart with products since 2010. Walmart uses its products to operate its machinery in its warehouse. And in 2021, Plug Power is expanding to Walmart's e-commerce business. That should really help the company's sales. Amazon and Walmart have a vested interest to see this company succeed. Both Amazon and Walmart have warrants on this company. Warrants are just long dated options. This company was huge in the dot com boom, then lost 99% of its value in the early 2000s. It's come up quite a bit since then, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. This company doesn't have the best history. The company trades on the NASDAQ, two exchanges in Germany, 
They trade in the London Stock Exchange. They also trade in Austria and Italy. BlackRock is the company's biggest shareholder at 9.4%, then Vanguard at 6.2%, then DE Shaw, State Street, Hood River, Pinnacle, and Geode. The average age of the leadership team is 53, and the average tenure is about 6 years. The president has been with the company almost 13 years, and the compensation package is $3.7 million. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE is 12, the median in the market is 14.7, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share, they're at 38.5. So investors are paying about $38 for $1 revenue. That's much worse than the median and average. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 87.9, much worse than the median and average. The way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet, and that's 135 million. Their tangible equity is 120 million. So they have about $15 million of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, negative EBIT, negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity, negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 2.1, so they can easily cover their current liabilities. Their current assets are $140 million of cash, $25 million of receivables, and $75 million of inventory. So their free cash flow is negative $189 million but their working capital is 163 million. So it looks like they're gonna need more debt or equity to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Graph Tech and Fuel Cell, both in the same industry as Plug Power. And if Plug Power has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in every ratio except market cap. They're the biggest company of the three. So to summarize, I think they have a chance of becoming a really big company, especially if the EV market keeps growing, and they're a big part of that. Their main focus are forklifts and industrial machinery, not cars. But if they could break into the car industry, then they could go through the roof. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.